Hello guys, welcome back to the WS Boxing. Delighted to be on with Johnny Clark from Top Tier Boxing. Glad to get him back on uh, ahead of the December 9th show. And um, yes, good to get you back on. Yeah, thanks for having me, mate. Anytime, mate. And um, so, yeah, we'll get straight into it. So you've got Darren Seeley fighting Milus Fawn. Uh, I do believe it's four rounds, is it? Yeah, obviously Darren um, is out in Saudi at the moment. Sparring France is getting him ready for uh, Tyson Fury, but he um he had a tough debut, you know he had uh, Phil Williams on his pro debut and he unfortunately lost, but Phil was on my last show. He's very good. He's very good. So uh, obviously there's not many heavyweight journeymen about either, is there? <laughs> and he clearly needed to pick up a win that night. So yeah, I would have liked to have uh, got Darren out versus Phil Williams again, but Phil was uh, taken unfortunately. But it's always nice to. If someone loses, like um, Louis Smithson on my card, he lost to Jake Pollard mm. but then he, in his debut, then he come back and he beat him in his second fight. And I think it's always nice to put that to bed. You know, like maybe Harley Ben should have done that with Lee Heller. <laughs> yes. But uh, with Darren, um, yes, even though it wasn't his night, uh, I think he's tra changed trainers. Of course, he's now out in Saudi. Be interesting to see how he goes on, uh, especially against somebody else who's only had one fight as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, uh, he's on the show because Bill hit me up. He's manager trainer, and uh, yeah, it's good to have him on. Not I like fresh. I don't want every show looking the same, and it's nice to have uh, someone fresh and being a heavyweight as well. Who's obviously out in Saudi at the moment. Um, yeah, it's it's good for me. So I like it. But it's good that you get a few people like uh, we'll just speak about Kevin Raval now uh, against mm. Angelo Antonio. Is it four rounds that one? Yeah, so. Because we're um, obviously we got Sky and everything was on timings. I want to have quite a few on the card, like you said before we started. I got ten. I'd like to have twelve, but the problem with that is um, the timings. And these all want six, eight, ten, twelve minute round, uh, twelve rounds. It, it, it's too difficult. So I put it out there. If they want it, they can have it over four which obviously is a little bit easier for them, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but, yeah, so I've got a couple of four-rounders on there that really should be six or eight-rounders, if I'm if I'm being totally honest. Mm -hmm. But, of course, Kevin reveals, uh, Ravel has been on all three of your shows, I do believe. Yeah, he lives down the road. He lives down the road. It just makes sense. And you know what? It's not just because he lives down the road. He actually wants to come and have 50-50 fights. He don't want to pay a journeyman. He knows yeah, he's too good he for that. He went in the tournament, then he fought Rod, who was coming off a, a win as well, and then yeah, Gideon not... as well, he was coming off a, a good win. Um, and that was a good that was a close, very close fight against Gideon, which could have gone either way. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, some might say that Kevin won it. Um, obviously, being biased, I sat there and thought he did win it when I watched it back. I said, okay, I'll probably score this a draw, but either way, um. It's a shame because Kevin would have been in a title fight now. But that's boxing, isn't it? And he's there because he wants the 50-50s. We don't spend money on a journeyman, which means there's more money in the um, in the kitty to spend on production. So, yeah, and listen, he comes, he sells his tickets, he turns up, he's on weight, he doesn't put a foot wrong, and he lives down the road. So it's absolutely made for him, the show. And Angelo as well, um, he fought on your... First show, and this was meant to happen uh, June 17th, but it got, um, I don't what happened with it? Did Angelo get injured or? No, I think it was personal problems. Um, so, yeah, I can't really go into it. That's personal life. And sometimes that does get in the way, you know. So, fair play. And then he, he's showing that that problem's put to the side now. He's back training or he, he's always training because he needs to do that when you've got them problems in life you know um and now he's back and he's up for it and he's trying to fight everyone on the show <laughs> mm -hmm. um yes um and you've got of course georgie ellis as well fighting yeah, yeah late edition georgie um to be fair when i talk about local i went out for a meal with my wife and then opposite the it's just a turkish Opposite that, there was um, Simon Legg, my whip, and he was with his wife doing the um, doing a shop up. And I was like, "What are you doing?" He went, oh, "This is a shop now." When you got any space for your show for George Ellis, I was like, "No, but if I do, I'll, I'll let you know." And then, like, literally the next day, I had a drop out, 
So I just said to my mate, I have got a space. And then, uh, yeah, that's how Georgie got on. So fair play, Simon. It's, you never know when <laughs> that might fall in your lap. And I know it's going to be hard. Like, I know you're looking at Box Trick now, the same as me, so don't forget anyone's names. And uh, he's not matched. And this will be now nah, the headache that I'll get. I won't be able to sleep until he's matched. This is how I am. So I've got a couple of people on it. And uh, I reckon that gap will be filled by tomorrow afternoon. And um, it says on Box Trek that it's four rounds in the Super Bantam. And he uh, he normally fights Super Fly Flyweight. No, no. So there was someone that come on. We had Jake Pollard at one two two, um, and they said, "No, nah, no, nah, we want it at one one seven or one one five. So yeah, I don't know why that's the super event, and that was for the previous one. So, yeah, that will be changed, don't we? Mm -hmm. Is it six rounds or four rounds that one? Four? Uh, just four. Yeah. So the fight that dropped out was a four rounder. So now I've got timings and slots to be filled. Unfortunately, um, that could only be a four, or I could have not let Georgie come on, and then I could have up. Angelo's fight with Kevin to six, and then I could have upped Ryan Maycock and Thomas Galbraith to six. But I think that's a bit unfair where in their head and in their interviews, they've all been training at the moment for four. And I do believe that someone else, I, I like to have fresh blood on my show, as I keep saying. Mm. I don't want the same people, the same posters. I want to keep it fresh. Kevin, yeah, he's a bit different. You know what I mean? He, he, he's basically just a friend that's on my show. You know what I mean? Same as Jordan. They're local. They should be on it. They shouldn't be fighting York Hall or elsewhere where people can't get to and, and get back from that easy. We were just down the road. Mm. It just makes sense. But I like George Ellis. He's a very nice boy. Um, very nice team around him. And listen, he's coaches at the show anyway with a couple of boxers, so why not? Mm -hmm. And you've got William Hamilton v uh, Daryl Sharp as well. Yeah. So we'll... I don't know if you've got Will on Instagram. He, like, lives in the gym. He's been out injured for a while. I wake up in the morning, he's done two laps around London already. I feel shit. <laughs> but he gets me out of bed when I see boxers doing uh, the fitness early in the morning. It makes me feel, why am I lazy? Like, I'm getting up at 7 o'clock. They've already done, like, my daily workout already. So they're beating mm -hmm. me. And it pushes me. It pushes me. As you can probably see, I'm up and down in weight all the time. And... Uh, yeah, I just I just look at these inspirational boxes and it pushes me through. But he's that's a tough fight, really, Daryl, for a comeback. I see him knock someone out on um, that box off show, you know, where all the journeymen fight each other. It just shows that if a journeyman wants to have a rare and win, he can. And uh, that's what I want him to do on my show. I don't want easy fights. And I want the Daryl Sharp that was on that show on my show. You know, I don't want the Daryl Sharp that comes to tuck up. Well, I want a good fight. Yeah, I mean, and it's his first one back, so it's only a four he's, rounder. He's durable and he's he's tough as yeah. they come as well, and it it'll... yeah, yeah, and he's safe. I know that he's going to be there. Whereas you book some like Miles, I think he's got a couple of fights before he fights Darren. So then there's always going to be a little worry that he ain't going to come through, you know. So you have to keep your eye on it every week, checking the results, making sure he didn't get stopped or cut. Darren's so, um, out most yeah. weeks though. Yeah, yeah, but. He's not injured or cut or lost or stopped, is he? You know, like, yeah. that's what I'm saying. You can trust him to be there. You know, I, I don't look at that fight and feel worried. And I mm. guarantee now that he does get stopped and we, <laughs> and we have to replace him because I've said it. But in my heart, I, I, it's not something I worry about. I think it's a safe bet, you know. Mm. Like if you put Lee Hallett, Lee Hallett, Jake Pollard, they're out every week as well. Mm. You know they're coming through fine and you know they're going to be on your show. Unfortunately, no one's in the weight class to get them on my show. Mm. But and and you've also got jo of course Jordan Perkins uh, making his comeback fight against uh, Louis Smithson over six rounds in the super flyweight division. Uh, it's actually Bantam. It's gone to Bantam now, one one eight. Um, but he's going to do that this year. Listen, it's a great fight, Louis. A lovely lad. I've gone up. What I don't want to seem is a bit biased to each each boxer, the home boxer. And you speak to any of the way fighters on my show, they'll tell you they feel like the home fighter. Um, so I, I went up, watched his promo video get filmed, uh, had a good chat with him, made him feel welcomed, looked after him. And it's a good fight. It, it's a tough fight for Louis, obviously. It's a tough fight for um, Jordan as well. But I do think um, that 
if Jordan comes through and he's back in the title mix straight away, that's the thing. When he's down the there, the thing is, this could change Louis's career for having warm up sight. This could totally change his career as well. He could take the Jordan Perkins route, can't he? You know, what beat Jordan Perkins, and then when he puts the application into the ball to be in a title fight, he would say, Well, I don't have to go and fight all these journeymen. I've just beat your ex English and Southern Area champion in my third fight. You know, so why do I have to go and do all that? Or he could do that, then he could go and fight on a couple of shows under the radar, pick up a couple of wins, you know what I mean? And quickly get in, in that for next year, um, which I'm sure would be his plan. But as for Jordan, he gets this out of the way, and then that's obviously his plan as well. I know the English super fly is vacant at the moment. Mm. Um, it's a shame this fight ain't for that. <laughs> but unfortunately at the moment, uh, Louis hasn't had enough fights for that. Otherwise, I would have got that on the line. And, of course, Marcel Braithwaite uh, won the, the British, didn't he, and Commonwealth on Friday? Yeah, it was a stoppage, wasn't it? I think, I think. Yeah, he stopped him round nine. Yeah, yeah, nice. Good kid. Very good kid. Very, very good. So maybe a couple more fights before they have to go and fight someone like him, eh? Mm -hmm. And also, I think it's for the Commonwealth Silver, James Osborne v George O'Leary. Yeah, proper 50-50. They're both putting up videos of them training harder than I've ever seen them train. It's been brewing for a while. So for my first show, I wanted this fight. Yeah, because it was my first show and these are two local lads. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've grew up with them around boxing. I've seen them boxing on license on EBA Lee Eaton shows and I've seen them now turn over to fighting on everyone else's shows. I'm, I'm going to their shows because I know them. And then I thought, my show, what great fight to get them both on. But they both said they wanted the southern area on the line if they had to fight because it's mm. too big not to. And I was like, yeah, no worries, I get it. So then Ozzy come on the first show. And then the second show, Ozzy was meant to be on, but then he went to a Peacock show just to up his record a bit. But I said to him, you can't go on that, get cut, and then come on my show. Because if you do get cut and I have to cancel, then it's a big ball lake and it's a good ticket seller. And it's a lot of headache to get everything back. So oh, he was like rather... Valencia. Yeah, no, this was before. So I said, you can't do that. And then he then got ill and couldn't fight on a Peacock show. So I said, 100%, you can be on my show. And then that's when he fought Valencia. You know what I mean? And then I said to him, next, on your interview, call that George O'Leary. You got him on my next show. Yeah, we're going to work it. We'll get a title on the line. If not... Listen, it's the perfect time. And then from that, you'll get the title shot from it. Um, I'll try and get his eliminator. And then last second of the fight, he got cut. Last second of the fight. Uh, Ozzy got cut and he couldn't fight George O'Leary. So then he had to come off the next show. But he come and watched and George fought. George's opponent dropped out three times. He was fighting at 82, 81. Then he went down to 60, uh, 76. Uh, on the day, not even day before, so he had against a train. Cook. Yeah, against Cook. So he was up and down, but he remained professional. And I didn't think I'd be able to get this on the line for him. But then I spoke to Debbie, and we got the uh, Commonwealth Silver. But it, the original fight date was the 2nd of December. Yeah? And then I changed it because Eubank Ben was meant to be on that date. So I had some inside info that Eubank Ben was on that date, and I was like, I'm not clashing with that. Because I, for one, want to go to that. And two, the media and that won't be nowhere near me. And that's what sells the shows as well. I'll get a lot of media there. So I was like, no, fuck that. We're changing. I changed. And then that meant that George O'Leary could fight because he couldn't fight on a second because his manager and trainer is on holiday on a cruise. So now that set up perfect. I wrote to the Commonwealth. They had the title was vacant. And she said, um, he hasn't had enough fight, but let me run through the board. <clears throat> the Commonwealth board, and they said, yeah, he, he he wants to fight. He's having good fights. And once he's won from this, his record's good enough anyway. And I was like, cool. I said, it'll be a great fight, and I'll, I'll set it up very nicely. And, uh, yeah, so then when they got over the line, both of them emotional, couldn't believe it. It's massive for them. It's I've massive for the area. This, this isn't, I'm not sure who's going to win, but this isn't going the distance, in my opinion. No, no, like, I'll watch um, George's video. I think, fuck me, he is quite good, isn't he? And then i watch watch... Um, Ozzy's video and think, well, they're powerful, though, if he catches him. And then I watch Jules, I think, but he can box George. And then like it's like literally tap-for-tap -tap videos. And I'm like, oh, can't can't pick one. Mm. But 
obviously, it's, it's going to be pro- probably be fight tonight. It'll probably be fight tonight. You know what I mean? There's, there's lots of fights that potentially can steal the night. Another one, Ryan Maycock v Thomas Galbraith. I mean, they've Paul both Randa. been going a bit back and forth on um, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a bit pantomime Like the bad guy, the villain, uh, was always Ryan Maycock and every show, everyone wanted to punch him. Everyone hated him. The commentators, um, the presenters, I think he was rubbing up the wrong way at some stage. And then he turned it around. Everyone absolutely loves him. Like, everyone loves him. He's part of the team, part of the family. No stress, no drama. Look after him. He sends me nice messages all the time. And then um, now he's got Thomas Galbraith, who's pissed everyone off. So he's now the villain. So the ex villain's beating up the new villain. It's like it's like a movie. But he's come in, he was kicking off at the press conference, and uh, the videos have gone up on IFL last night. Listen, it's all fun and games, but uh, it's only four rounds, and Thomas knows he's got a big task in front of him. Big, big task. But if he comes through this, he'll know where he's at in boxing, in my eyes. Do you think the winner, of course, I think, of course, we'll get on to Jack Martin's fight in a bit, but do you think the winner will go on to fight for like, like the winner of Thomas Ryan gets to fight for the Southern area? Possibly, yeah. So we could have the winner of Kevin versus the winners of Thomas Ryan could fight for the Southern area if Jack still, if Jack releases it. If Jack don't release it, then possibly one of them two fights could go for it. I don't think um, Tyrone King, who I'd like to fight for it. He he's not um he's not ready. So basically he ended that fight too soon, where if it was an eight rounder, he probably would have gone into a title fight for his next one, but he didn't learn enough in that. He learned a mistake and then but he went he down, back. got back up and <laughs> yeah, straight away. But that was two rounds. And his coach is saying we need more. So he wants six, eight, and then he wants to go into a ten, which is fair, because in my eyes he could take it now. But once he is that champion, he's got a target on his back. So, yeah, so it's not it, it, it's not right for him, which I understand. So possibly one of the other two boys against Jack or one of the other two winners against each other. So that that's the way that one's looking. But again, Thomas and Ryan could steal the show as well. And you know what? They'll probably be first fight tonight. I really? don't know. When, when, like, this is the thing. I've got so many on there. Like, obviously... The three title fights are going to be on the on the main show. Then yeah. I've got Jordan and Louis, the six rounder, so that'll be on the main card. Um, and Will Hamilton is the ticket setter. A lot of high high end VIP friends as well, so he'll be on like splitting up the title fights towards the end. So then all the others they're going to be before seven thirty. But I might because they're only four rounders. I might be able to push Kevin, Angelo, and Ryan and Thomas up the card and just start the seven o'clock show with that on uh, Sky. That's what I'd like because I think they deserve it because I don't think anyone really fighting a journeyman should be on TV, in my my opinion. You know, my opinion is if you're learning, then learn. And then when you've learned, then you can get on TV. Mm-hmm. And I think I should reward the people fighting 50-50s for being on TV. The only problem is they need to sell the tickets <laughs> to have a crowd there. So... Mm-hmm. We'll get them tickets coming in and then we'll see how we're getting on. Of course, Jamie Robinson also on the card. Yeah, yeah. So he's uh, his manager sorting his opponent out for me, uh, matchmaking him. I think it's done. I think it's done. Uh, oh, are you there, mate? Sorry, someone's trying to ring me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's all sorted. And then, um, yeah, it's good to have him on because I speak about bridging the gap. Yeah. And for me, he's someone who's in that gap. He should be on TV, but after his last fight, like he should definitely be on TV for one, for the bollocks that he's shown. Um, no pun intended, Joe. <laughs> but he uh, he should be on TV and then my show should be on TV and he should be getting TV money. My show should be getting TV money. So really, it's a match made in heaven for me. Um, he just needs one back, a little lighter weight, and then I think his next couple of fights will be uh, leading the way to winning the title at Super Light. So, yeah, I wish him all the luck in the world and I'm glad he's on my show. 
Mm -hmm. Of course, Jack uh, Martin, CJ Challenger for the Commonwealth, silver at Super Welterweight. Yeah, great fight. Two Let's Go Boys, so a Let's Go Derby. I spoke to them both quite a lot. Um, it was a bit, I didn't like that CJ, he just had a fight and then he went on holiday and then all our media was on while he was on holiday. So I felt a bit shit for him that he missed out on it because obviously that's what helped build it. Like he's in Leicester anyway, so will he have got here and back? I don't know. Um, but for me, great fight. Jack's my first champion as well. So always, uh, you know what I mean? Like it's the first time I had to get in the ring and have a photo with, with someone who, who's got a belt. So I was a bit nervous doing that anyway, to be fair. But um, yeah, it's always been nice. And obviously CJ, he's 40 and 0, just stopped his last opponent. Um, great fight and bring a little crowd down. Uh, CJ's gym as well like they're people that I could probably get on my next couple of shows once they see the levels down here and what I'm going to do for them they'll probably be pestering me to come on so that way I could get them fighting the likes of a Kevin Reville a Marley Mason you know and then start pinging them off against each other let's talk That's um good. with Marley and Jeff do you think the rematch would be on your show I want it on there like let's face it I'm the one who put the fight to the pair of them and then they went on TM14 show, uh, kicked off, went from eight rounds to six, ended up as a draw. And now Marley's saying he wants it back on my show. Um, willing to do it. I think there was some talk yesterday about it. I'm still waiting to hear back. Um, but either way, Marley will be on my show in February. So I need to get him an opponent or a title. And I like the Jeff fight. I like the rematch. Let's do it. Do you think a draw was fair in that Didn't fight? See it. I was with my wife. She was pregnant, so I had to take her when it kicked off. And it was right next to me. And uh, Alfie Gaskins, that Dan, he actually pulled me up and went, come on. I was like, I ain't moving. You know, a bit of pride of that. I was like, I ain't moving. I can handle these. And then uh, it was quick. And I got my wife quickly walked. And as we turned around, a massive brawl like, behind us. So, yeah, probably best I did move. <laughs> but, yeah, I did actually see it. I haven't been able to watch it back either. Um, is it on YouTube? Uh, I'm not sure. Or is it on Fight TV? It was on Fight no. Zone. No, yeah, I haven't seen it then. No, but I'll, I'll try. I'll try. So, would that be like for the Commonwealth Silver or the Southern? Who's got the Southern area at that weight? Um, I don't know what weight they was actually fighting at. They keep changing his weight sometimes. It was lightweight, light, I think, or Super Feather, one of them. Lightweight was um, Martin McDonough won it, but then um, oh yeah. And then he let it go, and who's the guy that? Yes, Al Gainer, I think. Yeah, I think it was. He beat that... Aaron Prosper. Yeah, I think. And there was Marley Mason was sparring someone. I can't remember his name. But then the Super Feather, where Marley wants to fight at that fight for the Southern area, got cancelled, didn't it? Uh, mm. Caskill and is it Weber Smith or Weber Kane? Yeah. Oh, Weber Caswell Kane. Weber Kane, yeah. Yeah, that fight got cancelled. So let me see if one of them wants to fight Marley on it. You never know. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So what. Oh, and then the last fight, I think, I do believe it's main event, uh, Constantine Ursu v Jordan Dijon. Yeah, and uh, just to be honest with you, like, this fight, I've wanted something like this on my show, but then when it's there, you, I, I worried a bit because, listen, we're, we're only a small team, you know, and to get security uh, weigh-ins at media days, it costs a lot of money, you know what I mean? Like, mm. everything is costing a lot of money. Thankfully, I'm getting some like decent sponsorship in, but I had to get security for them because I just thought they were going to kick off, but they didn't. They they, they didn't. wanted to go out. Were they the one who you said let's yeah. do it outside already? Yeah, yeah, there, there was that for that. But listen, Ursu is like kind of a, a, a secret star. Like I've heard a lot about his sparring and and whatever, but for me, sparring and fighting are, are two different things. In sparring, O'Hara Davis apparently. Yeah, I was there. It was amazing. And then there's so many stories they were telling me while I was there. And I was like, okay. Yeah, I mean, but then you've got stories and what I've seen that they match. Don't get me wrong. And then you've got Jordan Dujon, who is the real deal in the pro game. So you've got an ex-amateur superstar, really, who's going around sparring everyone and whipping their ass, apparently, um, to then fight a proper professional boxer in Jordan who is a nice guy and he's only ever been nice to me, but he's rattled, angry, and 
there's some bad blood, and it is pure bad blood. And I, I, I get it. You know what I mean? Like all these interviews that people do, and people put on captions and and whatnot, so it gets people biting. But I get it. But I was shocked how he turned, and I'm glad he did. And I'm glad that there, he's still respectful enough to say that it's boxing, and I can't wait for the night. Like I am. Obviously, I'm not going to try and rush through the card on the night. I'm, I'm going to sit there patiently and soak up every fight because every fight's got its own little story. Mm. And uh, the main event, I'm hoping it keeps bums on seats and people don't leave after their mates watched it because obviously Jordan will do a few tickets and that anyway. You know what I mean, but um, obviously Ursu is like really an away fighter. Um, so he ain't going to bring hundreds, man. He'll bring a few. Uh, be, it's going to be a good watch, and I hope that people stay there and watch it for that fight. Mhm. Mm. And um, is have you have you got any sh shows like booked in for next year that you can say or? Yeah, yeah. So I've got five shows next year. First one's February the tenth. Um, already locked in an English title for that. Um, probably some of these silver Commonwealths might flip over, but as I said at the start, I want fresh faces. I want new faces, new year, fresh faces. Like, I don't want to put up a poster and everyone go, well, that was similar to the last show. But like, it doesn't get my sponsors excited to come down and watch the show, you know. I sell 20 tables myself. That's 200 tickets. They might want to see some of the same faces, like shows one and two's winner versus shows three and four. Yeah, that's, that's all right, but not too many of them. Like the top mm -hmm. three main events, like you want to see... Uh, fresh fresh faces, new belts, and getting more people from other gyms at my show so then I can show people the levels that we're actually uh, producing and then basically get more people wanting to be on my show. That's the aim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you've got one February 10th, you said. Are yeah, they all February, at Brentwood Centre? Yeah, February, April, mm, maybe July, September. November, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All at Brentwood Centre. I was going to go on the top tier tour, but when you got guys from Leicester, Wales, uh, Birmingham, all trying to get on the show, I thought, why do I need to go up there? I've got everything set up in this venue. I've got agreements in place. I've got good deals now that I've been working on to get me in. I know what works and what don't. If I go to a new venue and make a mistake as well, I wouldn't like that. So let's stay where we are. I've got a good backing of Rami in that area, and I'll just like to stay at that. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, and um, yeah, thank you for your time, Johnny, and um, uh, you're welcome, good luck mate. with the thank show you. as always. No, good. You right though? Other than that? Yeah, mate, I'm good. Thank you. That's all right, mate. See you soon. Yeah. Yeah, mate. Bye.